I say this in, in the most polite and loving way. Now I was raised in Canada. So I grew up on the internet. I went to school, I was homeschooled from the age of nine on the internet. Um, I knew a lot about computers from when I was about nine, 10 because of where I lived. And when I came to England, people didn't have, people didn't have technology. Like they, I was 14 and nobody had computers in their house. And I was shocked. So I was like, I was about 13 because I've always had a computer. So I say this with much respect. I feel like even just England as a country and an environment compared to like America, Canada, we are still way behind when it comes to the third technology revolution. And one of the things that I, I kind of touch on a lot and I really encourage outside of investing, because what I find with investing is investing, if you, even if you know what you're doing, it's risk and you can lose it all. And investing for me, based on being in the investment world, there's a reason why we only specify certain assets or for people with money. Not because we don't want people to access, but if you are somebody that's working in the nine to five, kind of old school, go to your job, I would say not skilled, not skilled for the future or skilled for the now, let's just say you want a 35, 40, 50K salary, that is probably not as big enough salary to take major risks. Now, if maybe from a household income of 100,000 or more, you can take some risks, a little bit of risk without it really affecting you on your balance sheet. Um, and this is why I, I'm, I'm one of these things like, if you are gonna live a holistic life and be wealthy, one, you need to know your value and you need to expend that value. So you've got enough income and money coming in just from you. Just if the markets collapse tomorrow, you could still offer a technical skill or technique that you can make money. Everybody needs to have that. And everybody needs to know how to maximize that. And so in the third industrial revolution where the internet and mass communication brings this in, that is, this has been the era. This is the era where a person can make a million dollars a month just by selling information. This is the era where somebody can get 2000 clients in a day just through programmatic advertising, Facebook advertising. This is an era where a message can reach a million people in a matter of seconds just because they have social media. And people aren't even leveraging that technology to get rich and mm. overlooking this, you know, and I'm really, I, I'm, I'm, I say this because I've done all of it and I still, I haven't worked in a company or business like it's setting for seven years. I have earned, yeah, I want to say seven figures or more, well, seven figures, let's say, just from consultancy alone that I do online, right? So that's just outside of what I do in crypto. So my point, what I'm trying to say is, is that there's a third revolution, which is about what we're doing now. We're able to meet from all over the world. I can share some great insight. I can teach people things all the way in, well, you're Timbuktu, and I'm here and do business with people all over the world because of this third wave of technology, right? Social media, um, automation, marketing technology. You know, I can be selling a product in my sleep because the technology exists. I can distribute my goods and services to a global audience. So again, mindset and really understanding how these technologies, if we're, if we're still working in the first and second revolution because remember our parents came from this revolution if we're learning from them or following their footsteps we're behind we need to be really thinking about the third third and fourth now we're talking about the fourth but i still think people need to understand the the value and the power of the third if you're not maximizing the third you might leapfrog to the fourth but i feel like the underlying technologies that are making people rich today and when i say like i'm not hitting a million dollars a month but i'm around people in my my masterminds that are doing that that are making cash 300 500,000 just selling courses just selling information or learning something or helping somebody solve a problem so money's not an issue it's mindset and it's understanding and it's insight um and we just need to really be paying attention. And I want you to really think about you and, and where you stand because the biggest challenge people have is this fear, um, this burying their head in the sand, this um, resignation. You know, people talk about age or I'm not smart enough or I'm not this. Do I have two heads? No. The people that I see, do they have two heads? No. All we did 
or all people that are succeeding in this new third and fourth is we learned, we all had to learn. No, nobody teaching this stuff in school. We all right. did degrees. Right. I did a, a degree in business management and IT. I didn't learn half the things I've had to pay people and this is one of the things i was saying to sister salvina before so i gave her a story an analogy of um one of my one of well my greatest mentor and i've been, men been mentoring under him for nine years called roger hamilton and he decided to pay um, a quarter of a million pounds to spend like three days in nectar island with richard branson and when i, when I thought about it i was like why would you that's a lot of like it's a lot, it's a lot of coin but he said the reason why he did that is that, well, basically after he spent those three days, the next year he made $25 million in his business. And he said to me, look, the reason why I did spend 250 grand was because it's cheaper to spend that money than spend the next five, six years trying to figure out how to do something that somebody's already done. It saved him money. It saved him money and it saved him time. Because that's the biggest, the, the biggest value we have is time. Right. Time. Because guess what? It doesn't come back on money. I can lose, we can lose money, hundreds, millions. You could probably make that back in any amount of time. But time, once right. it goes, Gone. you never get it back. Mm -hmm. So he, rich people, wealthy people think like this. They want a shortcut because they want to make more money quicker. They mm. will pay to learn. They will pay for education. They will pay and invest to learn the skills. Yeah. You know, again, another example. So I have a development team. Um, we, we do blockchain development. But some of my developers, um, and, and I'll be honest, go you go on Google how much it costs to hire a blockchain developer. It costs you about a quarter of a million just to hire someone. And again, opportunity, because there's not many people doing it. The skills aren't there, but the demand is high. So I told one of my friends, he's a developer. And I said, well, how much would it cost to uptrain you to become a blockchain developer? Um, so we worked it out. We got the courses. I think we spent less than 200 pounds on courses, right? Now he can develop, like he can build an ERC token. He can build, because it's, it's, again, it's just that he didn't, you just got to know what you need to do. He had the basis because he knows how to use Python and all these scripting languages, but he didn't have the blockchain protocol. So he spent a couple of months doing it. Now this guy can build blockchains. And now he's consulting for 800 pounds a day, just from investing a little bit of money and a little bit of time. He's now gone from a 55 grand job to 800 pound day contractor on blockchain so can you just see guys like just investing and paying for knowledge you because now he's paid for that he can go anywhere in the world that needs a blockchain developer he can go and do that forever mm -hmm. and my point again going back to your value and understanding you as an individual the skills you can acquire because most of us don't have these skills we weren't born with them we had to learn them and we learned them through dedication you know, every day reading. That's what I do as an analyst. Every day I read, every day. So I say all this and I go into this point to one, hopefully give you guys some encouragement that you are valuable. Even if you think what you have or what you know is not valuable, guess what? There's something you've done, know, achieved, been through that there's someone in this world that will pay you to help them solve, achieve, you know, there's, so I just want people to understand that. And the third, third industrial revolution is basically our, our opportunity to really be able to do that at a big level, right? So moving on, seeing as we're now going into the fourth industrial revolution, which is now, so from the 1970s to today, we're like at the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution. And I think this is why this, all these talks about metaverse, DAOs, um, NFTs, um, augmented reality, virtual reality is scaring people because not in, only knowing that we've been living in the metaverse, because most people spend their day scrolling through social media, talking to their friends on, on a communication app, app, whether it's WhatsApp, Facebook. Um, a lot of us are spending time in the metaverse, which is basically social media. But now what they're adding is this new layer where virtual reality, i.e. the digital reality, now overlays into the real reality. And this is changing every single thing. And this is why 
this period of human history, I believe, is probably one of the biggest um, revolutions ever. And I say this, um, I don't say this lightly, and I say this to cement this into everyone's brain that this moment in history affords us probably one of the biggest opportunities in business, in finance, in, in, in general health and well-being, as in, you know, most people want money so that they don't have to work. <laughs> and most people want money because they want to experience things in life, travel, do things, own things, experience driving a Ferrari. I mean, they say that most of us aren't afraid of dying, but what we're afraid of is not living out the aspirations and dreams. And those go into three categories. One, the growth that you want to experience as a human being, the actual physical experiences, as in, I wanna taste this food, I wanna see this country, and then the legacy that they want to leave in, in, this, in the world, right? And, and, and most of us in some aspect do the things that we do for those reasons, right? So where we're at now is um, a stage and, and, and point in evolution and history, which is the fourth industrial revolution, which we call the fourth wave, Industry 4.0, which is web 3.0 and this is really where digital currencies digital technologies and the site what we call cyber physical system and internet of things interact right and this guys is is really where we are we are now and this is why the conversation around bitcoin and and digital currencies and metaverse and nfts are becoming widely 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 popular so i i'm going to before I start talking, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to have enough to say. This is a like, <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, and I don't want to jump from point to point. This real, this this message I'm serving today is really to give you guys like the whole context of a small piece. Blockchain, I would say, is a small piece. I think it's the biggest piece of this whole thing with the internet, things, and metaverse, because blockchain is what solidifies and verifies and creates the 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 mechanism for it to work in a, in a way that things don't work now so let me just explain what a big blockchain is for those of you some of you know some of you don't but i've, I've made this really cool analogy i think it's cool you guys can tell me if it's cool or not. i think it's cool but i think it's a simple way for us to really understand um what blockchain technology is and then why it matters to us okay Oh, sorry. Actually, I, did, I didn't break down the four. There was another slide that I wanted to do. So again, speaking about the fourth industrial wave, before I tell you about blockchain, let me tell you about, just touch on the other ones, because these technologies, they're like, think about like Microsoft Office. It's a package. You've got Microsoft Excel, you've got Microsoft, and they all do different things, but we need all of them to kind of, you know, do our documentation and our databases. So the core technologies, Internet of Things, how many people just drop in the comments um know and understand what an, in, an internet of things is please drop a one if you know what it is um drop a zero if you don't i'm going to be checking just to see um just just if you guys understand what the internet of things is and if you've ever even heard of it before some people have some people haven't but just drop a, a one in the comments let me know where you guys are at um with understanding the internet of things I know probably maybe some of our younger audience may. Um, and again, I, I don't like this age thing. I think we sometimes when we are, the problem with ages is just that we're set in our ways. Older people are set in their ways. They like to do things how they've always done it and that's how they've always done it and that's it. And it's okay in some aspects, but in, in a fast changing world, you will end up redundant. I'll, and I'll, I'll say this in the most politest way because I'm just being real.